Today we're going to look at views in X-Plane. Um, there's quite a lot of things you can do with views in X-Plane and not, not a lot to be realized. So the main views on the keyboard are the number keys above the, the alphabet characters, so along the top of the keyboard. You have to press Shift with them. So if we do Shift 1, we're looking at the Zebo mod 737 by the way. If we do Shift 1, we get a rather strange view that lets you pan around freely with the camera that starts out looking at your aircraft. If you press Shift 2, you get kind of a, a control tower type view, but it's not the control tower. If you press Shift 3, you get a flyby view. Obviously, this makes more sense if you're flying in the air when it happens. If you press Shift 4, you get a, a view you can pan around with the mouse. So I'm holding the right mouse button down to pan around. So it's the same as when you're looking around in the cockpit using the right mouse button. You can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. I actually prefer to use this obeys the normal commands of using dot and comma on the keyboard or sorry um, full stop and comma. So you can actually travel with the camera as well which makes it look a bit more realistic when you're close up. Um, Shift and 5 will give you the control tower view. So I'm here at Stansted at the moment. So you can't move the camera though. You can't use full stop and comma or any of the cursor keys, which is a shame. But at least it's there. Um, shift 6 gives you the tail view. I'm not, I can't remember what Shift 7 and 8 do. Uh, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, um, Shift and 9 is your basic cockpit view. So what a lot of people don't realize with X-Plane is you can program the numbers on the keypad to be whatever views you want. So I've pressed Shift and 9 to see the cockpit normally. Now I'm seeing the cockpit normally. I can hold the right mouse button down when I'm not clicking on an instrument. And I can look around just by moving the mouse. I can also, without the right mouse button, I can just roll the mouse wheel. This can be annoying because it also works on dials. So the the mouse rolling the um the wheel on the mouse will do this. So I can zoom in and out with the wheel and if the mouse is over something it's going to adjust it. So you have to be careful about where you put the mouse when you're wanting to zoom in and out quickly. So you can pan around using the right mouse button held down. You can use the cursor keys to go sideways. And this is relative to where you're looking, by the way. So if I look sideways and go sideways on the keyboard with the cursor keys, it's going to be relative to the direction I'm looking. So you can go sideways. You can go up and down with the cursor keys. You can also use the full stop and the comma on the keyboard to go forwards and backwards. And you can actually go faster. So if I pan left here, open the door, hold full stop on to go forwards. So it's quite slow at the moment. If I press shift first and then full stop, I will go faster. So it's useful if you're wanting to make a specific view to be able to do that. So if I press shift and nine, we're back in the center of the cockpit. So the trick with the number the the keys on the number pad is you can press you can get a view specifically how you want it so you can zoom in and out and you can move around and when you've got it exactly where you want it so say we were going to look at the overhead panel we could maybe pan up and we're obviously we're too close to it so we can press comma to move away from it and we can press the up arrow a little bit and we can play around with panning to get it straight. So you might want that as a view. So I can do that and I can press control together with the number on the keypad you want to be that view. So control and five, for example, I use for that. And you can see there's the actual one I use. So I, I typically configure nine on the keypad to look forwards. Eight for the rear overhead panel five for the front overhead panel including the lights two for the console zero for the back of the console if it's there in the aircraft i then typically use six 
which is over to the side. So if you think in terms of where you're sitting, six is to the side of the keypad, so it's the side of where you are, which gets me the um, flight management computer. And I've got one for the AVI tab on, or the tablet, if there's a tablet on the aircraft. And then I've got four is, I, again, four and seven I've just used for some random views of things inside the aircraft. So six, I've got that. What have I used three for? Oh, for three, I never use this. It's for programming the autopilot. So I've actually got three mapped to zoom in on this panel. But yeah, typically in an aircraft, I'll set nine up. And it's worth pointing out, if you look at the default view versus my view, I have raised my seat ever so slightly. So one of the typical things you find in a lot of aircraft is they sit you very low in the, the cockpit. So for um, for approach, I like to be able to see a little bit further down over the nose. But I always make sure that so if I went even further up, I would pan down so I can see these instruments properly. But yeah, you can see I've taken a bit of care with making sure the view is straight. So yeah, that's basically it. So once you're happy with where you want the camera pointed, press control and a keypad number. And then when you press the keypad number without control, it goes straight to that view. So I can go and flick around quickly and go to the various controls and get to them. Without having to, it's, it's funny though, because I will often while I'm flying, just look around and do things. Because I think part of the orientation of learning where things are is in relation to where you're sitting and that actually helps so rather than pressing zero to go to this actually going from the cockpit from the pilot's seat and looking down at it is actually helpful sometimes so you kind of you learn the orientation of the the switches and buttons um otherwise yeah that's it so that's all i really wanted to cover was how you can program the keypad to do views in x-plane so it's control and the keypad number sets the view and then just the keypad number on its own takes you to that view. Okay, that's it.